Everyone thinks I, uh, I record in my bedroom, but I actually don't. I record in my living room, guys. The trim is getting deader. The sunglasses are on. You know it's a Toastify video. How is it going, everyone? Um, it's your boy Toastify here. Now, let's talk about Twitter. The Satan Pit of the internet. Who knew that letting people post anything within the limit of 240 characters would create such a toxic site? Rife with diseases such as K-pop stands using tragedies to promote their fan cams, or dream stands drawing porn of minors. Every social media site is incredibly miserable, such as Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube, which is why you're watching this video. And don't even get me started on Discord. With massive platforms accessible to all, there are always bound to be a few bad eggs. People who will step out of line either to troll or to just satiate their own fantasies. On sites such as YouTube, the platform and the community does not tolerate their behaviour, but on Twitter, people seem to be a lot more lenient. Twitter's policies want to protect the big bad pedophiles for a while, and Twitter has become infamous for map communities and the Megalink hashtag, and these kind of things have spread out across the platform, culturing like a fungus or a disease. Platforms have a responsibility to keep the line balanced between eradicating someone's account for calling someone a virgin and allowing everything to be a fair game, which is what NeoGAF does. Twitter is known as a platform that has a big pedophile problem, having more nonces in one place than Epstein Island. But let's be fair to them, with every platform that gets as big as Twitter, people like that can be able to sneak under the radar. It's the same thing that happens to YouTube, like YouTube Wake Up and Cartoon Incorporated. These platforms work behind the scenes, taking down thousands of predators and pedophiles. It's likely that someone's going to fly under the radar, and if someone does do that, then the users have a responsibility to report them to the support teams of the platforms, and then these platforms are expected to take them down as well. So what happens when a platform support team has a predator case handed to them, plate, knife and fork, but then they ignore it. This is how Twitter has managed to get into a sticky situation with a lawsuit that could completely destroy the website. This Twitter lawsuit originates from a male user who will call John for now as the lawsuit anonymizes his name. This male user was 13 turning 14 in 2017 when he started messing someone who was posing as a 16 year old female from his school. After talking, the two of them exchanged nude photographs. The 16 year old female then revealed themselves to be a child trafficker who started blackmailing John into sending more photos otherwise they would message his family, friends and even his pastor which would be a very awkward conversation in the confessional Booth. John was forced into sending new videos of himself performing sexual actions with another person, and this is child porn if you haven't already realised. The traffickers attempted to meet up with him in person, but thankfully that never happened, and John eventually blocked them and ignored them, which is probably the best thing to do. At which point they messaged him under a different account, and they told him he had made a big mistake. Fast forward to a few years later in 2019, and a compilation of John's videos that he had sent to the blackmailers had made it onto Twitter, and it became viral, getting thousands of views and likes. Now, these videos were reported by concerned users, but Twitter support never responded to any of these reports. Here's one on screen which is incredibly detailed, and it never got a response at all. In around 2020, John was made aware of these videos as they spread around his school, which resulted in him getting bullied, teased, and harassed. He became incredibly suicidal, and his parents noticed that. They found out that what was happening and immediately tried to get help from the police and Twitter. And after many complaints, Twitter support finally responded to them, but with this horrific email. Hello, thanks for reaching out. We reviewed the content and didn't find a violation of our policies, so no action will be taken at this time. If you believe there's a potential or copyright infringement, please start a new report. If the content is hosted on a third-party website, you need to contact the website support team to report it. Your safety is the most important thing, and if you believe you're in danger, we can encourage you to contact your local authorities. Taking screenshots of these tweets is often a good idea, and we have more information available for law enforcement about our policies. Thanks, Twitter. What the fuck? So according to Twitter, child porn doesn't violate the policies, even though, one, there is a rule that specifically states it does, and two, it's child porn! You're meant to delete it, you fucking retard! It, uh, who would think that it doesn't violate p policies? It's literally child porn. Like, there is no way around this. There is no explanation for any of this. Literally, it it's child porn. What do you do when someone reports child porn to you? You delete it! You right? Do I need to? Do I need to have a? Uh, do I need to have a big flowchart or a diagram to explain this? No, you just you just need to delete it. That's that's it. I don't. I what the? F this is so fucked. Now, thankfully, John's mother had a mutual friend who was able to put her through to an agent of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. This agent then contacted Twitter, and Twitter finally took down the post and suspended the account. Although they didn't take any further measures, such as IP banning, and the person who made the account made a new account and reposted. So after not detecting the CP even though it got hundreds of likes and thousands of views, and after several complaints, 
Twitter didn't suspend the account until the US government got involved, and even then they didn't do the utmost that they could. Not only did they ignore the complaint, but they also profited off the video and caused someone lifelong damage because that's how it works on Twitter. Twitter profits off tweets and videos. Twitter had a duty to protect people, and they did this terribly, especially the issue that Twitter has with the Megalinks hashtag and the map problem, and the fact that Twitter changed their policies this time last year, which let maps discuss their attraction towards kids, but not actually showing it, which, which is disgusting. I mean, calling pedophiles a phenomenon is just incredibly stupid and incredibly in ignorant and I, I shame on Twitter for doing this shame on Twitter I think it says quite a lot when Twitter ranks lower than Pornhub X videos and Bing for the reporting structure when it comes to reporting CP in Canada this also puts a lot in perspective of the lawsuit mentions how Twitter enforces their rules when it comes to slurs and supposed hate speech but they ignore pedophilia in fact the lawsuit uses Jack Dorsey's tweets about suspending Trump as an example to show that Twitter can be able to crack down on pedophilia as hard as they do with hate speech, but Twitter willfully ignores pedophiles for some reason or the other. It doesn't make sense at all. It just shocks me. It just shocks me how Twitter can suspend, you know, loads of my friends for supposed hate conduct and then pull this shit. You know, their policies are just so stupid, and these examples are representing the worst of the worst. Instead of the grey line where Twitter rules the land and lets people like this go, this is this is terrible, this is disgusting. But hey, if you want a fucking example of hate conduct, then here's one. To the person who said that child porn didn't violate Twitter policies, kill yourself. Legitimately kill yourself. It should never have to come to a lawsuit, and Twitter needs to start focusing on Twitter accounts who say faggot wants to get suspended, and look at the accounts who are distributing literal child porn. Twitter was meant to be an app where people trade conversations, not trading videos where minors have been exploited. So if this lawsuit goes through, what's going to happen? John's family has demanded that the court put something in place to talk to Twitter for making this mistake, and so something big is going to happen. On the plus side, Twitter is going to be compelled to do a lot more than reporting of the pedophiles. People are definitely going to be safer as Twitter is going to start paying more attention to them. Also, Twitter's lawsuit and hateful conduct was included in the lawsuit, and so Twitter might be forced to reverse that. So people will stop getting suspended for saying retard once, which is, which is nice. Accounts that are suspended probably won't be restored if this ever happens, but people won't get suspended for the stuff they were suspended for. However, there are a lot of negative con Connotations in this lawsuit. The motive is definitely good, but I'm not saying I support Twitter in this argument at all, but the consequences would be harmful for the site. If this lawsuit won, Twitter would amp up the policing on pedophiles, but as we all know, Twitter takes jokes literally, as we've seen with the hateful conduct policy. If someone made a pedophile joke post lawsuit, they could be suspended on Twitter for that. Also, Twitter would have to go like full safe mode, full Tumblr mode, removing all types of NSFW, and there would be a massive migration to another website. In 2016, allegations that child porn and predators were all across Tumblr persuaded Apple and Android to take down the apps from the app stores, unless Tumblr completely censors themselves and take by taking down any and all kinds of NSFW. But regardless of that, this should never come to a lawsuit. Twitter's support team is notorious for having a bad reputation, but this is just a whole new low. They should have taken responsibility and not ignored multiple complaints. The fact that just after being confronted by a government agent, they didn't even IP the ban who posted child porn, it it just dumbfounds me. It dumbfounds me. This is way worse than YouTube Wake Up ever was, and everyone should be held accountable from this. From the hate speech hunter Jack Dorsey to Del Harvey, the vice president of Twitter's trust and safety, who is more corrupt than most small world countries, who unfairly suspends whoever her friends want from. From Spazio Twat talking about platform manipulation to Chris Hansen taking down his critics. You should all be ashamed. Now, please, excuse me, I've got a job to do. Keep your hand on your gun. Don't you trust anyone There's just one kind of man that you can trust That's a dead man Or a gringo like me Be the first one to fire Every man is a liar there's just one kind of man who tells the truth That's a dead man or a gringo like me